to How to Sound Like, where I show you how to recreate the iconic tones of famous bass players. I am AMP the bass player, and the cool kids among you will recognize this series from my personal channel. Chris liked what I was doing over there and offered to have me on as a contributor on the bass channel, so here we are. I apologize in advance that you're gonna have yet another bearded white guy to keep track of, but to help you out, just remember that I'm the one with really long hair. Ooh, Today we're going to explore Duff McKagan's sound as heard on Guns N' Roses' debut album, Appetite for Destruction. When you've got guys like Slash and Axl Rose in your band, it would be pretty easy to get completely overshadowed, but Duff totally holds his own. He has a lot of really interesting parts that add a lot of flavor, and his tone is quite good. <laughs> So let's dive into the equipment he used back in 1987 to make this sound possible. For amps, Duff was using the legendary GK800RB, which is a really hi-fi sounding amp, as opposed to like the warm scoop sound that you get out of an SVT, and he was using a pair of GK410 cabinets. As for effects, Duff doesn't really use a whole lot, but he does use chorus. Initially, he was using an Ibanez CS9, and then later on switched to a Yamaha rack-mounted unit. I don't think it really gets a whole lot more 80s than a rack-mounted chorus. <laughs> the last piece of Duff's sound is his bass, which is a pretty iconic part of his whole kit. And he's got a pretty fun little story of how he came into the bass. Guns N' Roses band rehearsals took place a short distance away from a guitar center, and Duff remembers going in there all the time and never buying anything, hashtag relatable. We got a record deal, we got an advance, and I went in and bought that Fender Jazz Special. It was a Japanese-made 1986 Jazz Special. That bass is the sound of Appetite for Destruction. Despite the name, Duff's bass is a PJ rather than a jazz, and it is that configuration that, at least to me, really defines the 80s rock bass tone. Characteristic of that sound is all of the grunt that you would get from a P bass pickup, but then there's that sparkle that comes through from the jazz bass in the bridge position. It's only very slightly different from a jazz bass, so if you have a jazz and don't have a PJ, then the jazz bass will totally work for this tone. You will also want to play with a pick. You can actually hear a ton of like pick scratching noises, which comes from uh, attacking the strings at more of an angle. So the edge of the pick scrapes along the string. And that's probably a side effect of having your bass slung down really, really low like Duff does. And while I can't really recommend doing that, I can absolutely recommend playing with a pick because it sounds awesome. From an EQ perspective, Duff's sound is kind of like a big bowl of cap and crunch. Oops, all mids. <laughs> There's not a ton of low end happening, and there's just enough trouble for him to poke out where he needs to, and the rest of it is just all mids. Just, just enough so that he doesn't sound boxy anyway. I actually really love this quote from Duff on his sound. The bass tone that you hear on Appetite for Destruction is like a funk sound. I had to find the place to fit between Izzy's thinner guitar, Steven's kick and snare, and Slash's thicker, all-encompassing guitar and vocal. That's really important to find your space as a bass player. Now, I love how he says, find your space and not cut through the mix. And I kind of wish that phrase would just die altogether, because when you're a band, you want to be, you know, greater than the sum of your parts. And if you're competing against each other, which is what cut through the mix sounds like, then, then you're not being a functioning band and you're not being a team player. Anyway, moving along, let's talk about the gear I'm going to use today to try and replicate that famous 80s bass tone. Now for the intro, I was using this Yamaha BB735. It's kind of a reference to the Yamaha that Duff was using before he bought his Fender, but I don't think this is quite 80s enough and I think we can do a little bit better. Yeah, I, I think this will do. This is an Aria Pro 2 XRB, which is a really dumb name, but it is from 1988, so it's basically period accurate, and it's got a pair of EMG geezers in here, and I think it sounds very nicely aggressive for what we're trying to achieve. If you want to see more about this bass in particular, I'm going to have a video up on it on my channel soon, so do be sure to go to my channel and subscribe, but otherwise, let's get back to Duff. Beyond the bass, I'm just going to be using the Zoom B1X4. I've done this in several of my other videos where I can create entire bass rigs on this thing. And these are cheap, they're like a hundred bucks. So this is a really easy, accessible way to get lots and lots of different effects. And I'm just going to be going straight from this into my Scarlet Solo audio interface. So only thing that you're going to be hearing is this pedal and that bass. And, and, and me, because I'm, I'm part of it too. Now the first obstacle that I ran into when building this patch is that the Zoom doesn't have a GK amp sim. Like we've got Ampeg and Markbase and Aguilar and even Trace Elliott, but no GK. So if somebody from Zoom is watching this, 
please add GK in a future update. I think it would be really, really cool to have it because GK has its own unique thing going on that none of these other amps really do. Ultimately though, I did find a good replacement after A, B, C, Ding all of the other amps. I used the SWR amp and the matching 410, and I think that that got me the cleans that I was looking for. But it doesn't really have that GK bite, so I ended up using this RC Boost pedal, and it has a blend on it, so we can get a little bit of the overdrive from the pedal and the cleans from the amp, and then we get this sound. That puts us in the ballpark, but just to give it a little bit more of a polished feel, I stuck this glam compressor at the end, and I think that that glues everything together quite nicely. Now, if you're listening to that and thinking like, yeah, that's, that's close, I guess, just bear in mind, I'm using a $100 multi-effect pedal up against thousands of dollars of vintage 80s studio grade equipment. And when you think about it on those terms, I think we're getting pretty close <laughs> with the tools we've got. Anyway, let's hear what this sounds like in context. That sounds pretty great in the mix of the song, but I know that there are those of you sitting there thinking like, well, where's the chorus pedal, you dingus? Uh, it's been there the whole time. I just had it off because Duff doesn't use it that much. There are several chorus pedals in the Zoom, but I opted for the Corona Tri. It's no rack-mounted Yamaha, but it does emulate the exact same pedal that Duff has a tone print for, the TC Electronic pedal. So there, there's that. Good enough, right? This chorus sound shows up really predominantly in the intro of Sweet Child of Mine, so here's how that sounds. So there you have it. Duff Sound is basically a PJ bass played with a pick, lots of mids in your EQ, and a slightly overdriven hi-fi amp. That's basically all there is to it. Oh, and, and, and the chorus pedal when it feels right, of course. If you want to pick up one of these Zoom pedals, or maybe you want to get the uh, Duff Signature bass, I've got affiliate links in the description. You guys know how those work, so help a brother out. I've also got the Zoom patch up on my Patreon. It's not paid, you can just get it for free. I used to do them paid, but like, come on. I just want you guys to have them and play with them. And if you end up posting anything with it, do be sure to tag me because I'd love to see what you guys are doing. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of them, just go ahead and hit all the buttons down there. You know the drill. Do leave me a comment with who you'd like to see me do a how to sound like on next. I'm gonna try and do one of these a month. It's really tough because Elden Ring exists and I'm obsessed. <laughs> Thank you again to Chris and everyone over at the Bass Channel. Really looking forward to contributing here. And I will see you guys on the next one. And pee out! Yeah.